Welcome, I'm Joe Dagger of Business Sign One and would like to thank you for attending. I want to start out by discussing that Lean is really targeted to certain kinds of organizations. It's really about organizations that enjoy learning. And you have to take Lean on as a knowledge creation, especially in the sales and marketing arena, as a knowledge creation device versus a waste reduction type of thinking. And, and think of Lean more from an appreciative sense or a strength-based sense when you attach it to Lean Sales and Marketing, and I think it'll go a lot smoother for you from my experience. But I can sum up the entire presentation of Lean Sales and Marketing really in three steps. It's that simple. You go and see the initial practice, Gimba, the user. You form a working vision from the user experience an ideal situation of where the user wants to go. You visualize the user's process. And if you do that, it will be obvious to see what your next reaction should be and when to trigger it. Most problems with lean applying be, being applied to sales and marketing and it's viewed from the inside perspective out rather than it from Gimba. When you think about sales and marketing, where's Gimba? It's the place of use of your product or service. Viewing it from that direction is the key to lean sales and marketing. I use the lean marketing house as a way to introduce lean. I'll follow the same foundation of principles lean throughout this presentation. You may question me at times, but the difference will only be in the tools I prescribe and the perspective that I take. I adhere, like I said, to fundamental lean thinking. Dr. Deming believes that the journey to continuous improvement requires the understanding of systems, which he emphasizes in his own system of profound knowledge. There's a couple of points I want to make from that, though. Is within that context, Dr. Deming says, it is the structure of the organization rather than employees alone, which holds the key to improving the quality of output. That's key thinking as we move through this system, the structure of the organization. The other thing I want to mention is there's a lot of marketing systems out there in the world. You're all familiar with them or seen a lot of them. However, most of them, have relatively little value towards improvement or optimization as a whole. It's that systems thinking that Dr. Deming so well described, elaborated on through the years that are so important. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is identify value, right? From the customer standpoint. You know, a value stream is how your typical lean person would approach that sales and marketing perspective. They would look how to apply it on a project by project basis. As value is specified, value streams are identified, waste steps are removed, flow and pull are reduced, and we get me begin the process again until a state of perfection is reached. We do this with products and services. So when we begin we bring lean to sales and marketing. The first thing we do is we start looking at ways to make things better, faster, cheaper. And sales and marketing even has this sales funnel, as you can see linear here. We visualize the marketing cycle through the use of funnel thinking on how it narrows down to the actual purchase of the product. A linear approach to predict, plan, predict, plan and proceed is a tough way to advance. It assumes we can take our customer by the hand and lead them through the process. We assume we can get them to conform. And at the end of this whole process, we negotiate a win-win proposition. Well, there's something wrong with this picture. Most of us will say that we're customer-centered or service-centered, right? But where's the customer in this process? He's out here on the right-hand side. He's right here, out here on the end of the process. To 
traditional lean evolves around supply chain and goods or what I call product dominant logic. Sales and marketing are judged by the marketplace, not by an increase in cycle time or space. As I mentioned before, it's a user perspective. And the most critical driver of success is usability excellence. Users are a growth engine. Well, service dominant logic, SD logic, was introduced by Robert Lush and Stephen Vargo a few years ago. And they presented the case to use SD logic as an organizational foundation. Well, it's tough to introduce SD logic in various silos. It's just as it is tough to introduce lean that way because it really requires a cultural and a fundamental shift within the organization, taking the customer or the user experience as the center. I believe lean, when it's viewed as a knowledge creation platform, serves as the best vehicle for implementation of this logic. Let's think about it for a minute. Think of Amazon. Kindle is not a product, is it? It's an enabler of use. Even a company like Caterpillar recognizes that it has become the dealer network that provides value to the customer. But what we do so many times when we set out to improve sales and marketing, we look at how we do the work. We focus on our own activity. We focus on defects and waste. We must engage the customer Identify and understand that value is in the use of our product and service. If we can move there, if we can supply SD logic, we can capture the hearts of our sales and marketers. We have to think about business a little differently. We have to think about value from the outside in. I use the business model canvas as a starting point to identify value and the organization's structure in supporting it. As I draw a line down the center of it, you can see on the left side is the internal structure of our organization and what we do. On the right side is the external structure. Now sales and marketing concentrates on the right side, but I propose that the left is so important for their understanding because it is what required to enable the autonomy they need to operate in the marketplace. The right side is equally important for the internal people because it identifies the critical control points or interfaces with the customer. The canvas is made up of nine individual segments. None of them are exactly cast in stone but they're a great starting point. You may choose to rename them or modify them to fit your exact needs, of course. But it's it's not just as an A3. It's not meant to be an entire analysis without other documentation or supporting evidence. It is meant to provide direction, stimulate thought, and most of all, offer a clear and concise one-page document. Understanding how your customer how the user perceives your position in the marketplace may be the single most important issue you face. And that needs to be understood throughout the entire organization, especially within individual value streams. Now, Alex Alsterwalder uh, wrote the Business Model Generation book. It's been a bestseller on Amazon. I highly recommend that you have a copy of it to understand the canvas. So when we think of the business model canvas as the description, as our map for an individual value stream, we start understanding what a particular value stream will look like, how a customer operates within that value stream. Now, I'm not saying that there has to be a canvas for every value stream. I highly recommend it. I'm not saying there needs to be a canvas for every customer that's not possible but what i am saying is that if you have a particular think of it as a product stream you have certain customers in it 
is that you can organize it and this is what builds upon being able to increase the knowledge. If your value stream can be defined this way, we have a starting point and we can see where we increase our knowledge about our customer and where we increase the, the customer's knowledge about us. The lean practice of PDCA is ideal for learning and creating knowledge activities. And if we follow this type of thinking, it allows individuals and teams to recognize and take advantage of opportunities and make decisions faster and be more responsive. I'm not trying to force fit lean into sales and marketing. If you're here for that, it's wrong. I'm using lean because I think lean is the best methodology to develop sales and marketing in the conditions that present us today. So let's look, look just review it real quick. We still have the five core concepts. We're going to go through them all but we have specified value from the standpoint of the end customer, the user. Service dominant logic thinking. We have mapped the value stream. We've created a canvas for our value stream or you could even think of it as a um, product stream. And that value stream provides the clarity we need to create flow. And now we're gonna go into what I call the pillars of the lean marketing house to be able to create pull and flow. But to do that, you have to think about lean as a knowledge creation model. It is very common as customers go through a decision-making process that their minds will change. That's what hurts you in the marketing funnel concept. By looking at this as from a PDCA standpoint, it provides feedback to justify our hypothesis and increase our knowledge. It allows both the customer and us not to be perfect the first time. A good example, you see all these little arrows going into the poll section and the SEO and the SMO and the referrals and the surveys, advertising, events, PR. That's kind of what you think marketing is all about. It is. We In poll, we, we, we grasp from the world around us and we should spread our funnel as wide as we can effectively. When we involve customers with us, and then they go through them green blocks there is what each individual value stream is. Maybe just for one value stream or it could be for multiple value streams. But we, we go ahead and we try to get the customer into the right area so we can influence them properly. And if that doesn't work, if he doesn't want the influence, we allow him to go back out. We interact with him, learn what we can and leave him go back out to the outside world. It may be to be captured again, but we're involved with him. And so we continue though, marketing to him if he allows us. If he allows us and through our interaction with him, and whether it's through social, whether it's through some type of service, whether we're co-creating with him, depending upon the level of engagement, we'll go through a cycle. This allows that customer again, not to be perfect the first time. We experiment, we engage with each other and experiment. The rate of change and the speed of improvement is a key competitive factor in today's world. So as we, through our measurements and our data and our influence interaction get smarter, we will deal be dealing with a more precise group in our loops where more expensive marketing takes place. Because we're not looking for major jumps in performance. We're not looking at sitting there saying we're gonna take 2,000 people and close 2,000 people tomorrow. We're looking to, to, our, to get, gain massive breakthrough through frequent small improvement, PDCA. You know, as part of our cycle, we'll get feedback on all these actions. We'll get smarter with our listening and our measurement systems. It's part of a natural PDCA cycle. We have though to have a system involved and have a system in place so we can use and take advantage of all our resources. Remember I discussed Deming and structure. Organizations design processes which are copies of their existing structures. It is our responsibility and work to share and delegate it. It's how we get things done. However, if we don't change the structure, we will not be able to meet the demands our customers require. Our customers are starting to operate. Even though they may still look like they're a hierarchy structure, they're starting to operate as a collaborative structure. So we must first look at structure as a first step in creating lean sales and marketing an effective system. And to do this, we must have overlapping and shared responsibilities. Kind of like this Venn diagram I show versus that hierarchy. 
the best model that I have found to do this is a lean model. It's leader standard work as explained in David Mann's book, Creating a Lean Culture. The purpose of leader standard work is to create behavioral change through a visual management and daily accountability process, helping ensure that these improvements in the lean transform, transformation aren't lost to the culture of firefighting, backsliding, and what David calls the pit of instability and despair. I like to call it business as usual. But it is this method of leader standard work that allows us to start building lean engagement teams. Now, we may, big enough organization, may have several teams where we have one for each loop. We'll have our closers. We'll have, you know, people that specialize in the sales and the buying section of it or as someone that specialized in the collaboration section of it. Or we may have the different pillars. We could have three or four of these pillars for each value stream and maybe one team operates across all the pillars in the collaborative area. Maybe we have one outside, one group of um, a team that works in the sales and buying across all of them. So they can also work horizontally or in the repeat upsell, we may have one group. All right, but we may have just one single group for the whole team if we're small, smart enough or small enough, excuse me. We hope we're smart enough. The importance of this is though, is that there's overlapping structure. The importance of this is, is not only overlapping structures within the engagement teams, but there's a team coordinator, as I show here, a value stream manager that is responsible to the business model canvas that we develop for this value stream. He must be part of this in an overlapping way. And the way we do this is through daily standups, weekly meetings, ta monthly tacticals, where there's different levels of participation during that time. So it is all part of the leader standard work. The thing that has to surface though in it is that that servant leadership role must surface. You gotta empower the frontline staff with the resources. The key component of what a team coordinator does is supplying the resources. But these resources to be able to enable their actions to deliver an outstanding customer experience through becomes a primary responsibility for leadership. Standard work actually may become more standard for the higher ups as we move away from the main influencer and disruptor, the customer. And again, this is why it's so imperative to have the business model canvas as a guideline because it provides the clarity for everybody on the team. Now, this is a little cleaner example of what I was showing before. The drawing is a reflective of a Scrum Sprint. And Scrum is an iterative incremental framework for project management and agile software development. I use the loops to demonstrate a higher level of intimacy with a prospect. In the top loop, I got up there for existing customers and new customers to nurture an even stronger relationship. But to actually put these into practice, I use a Kanban board. You know, the only competitive advantage you really have is your ability to learn more effectively and efficiently from your customers. I talk about always positioning yourself in your customer's playground is the most important role. A Kanban board is a key component because it limits your work and process, which is inventory, which is customers. But I want to touch upon something because everybody looks at this and says, yeah, sure. Okay, this is a nice little thing, but how does it work for a big company? Well, let's say I was selling to Toyota. How would I go about it? How would I apply lean principles in selling to Toyota? Co-authors Jeff Liker and David Meyer, co-authors of the Toyota Way Field Book, created the pyramid of supplier partnering, partnering hierarchy that consisted of these seven steps. And to take these seven steps farther, they broke out what it meant for mutual understanding, what it meant to be interlocking structures. But this is how Toyota rates their suppliers. It's how they partner, what they share with them and do. I may be a new supplier to Toyota and be on the mutual understanding section, right? Or I may have been working with them for three or four years and I'm up the compatibility capabilities where, 
engineering, I have great engineering, operation, problem solving taking place, and we have compatible structures that we can work together. There's a certain format to that of how I work with Toyota. That's my standard work. Certain sales process that we do to maintain the compatibility capabilities or the control system, depending upon what part of the hierarchy I'm in. I do that. It could even be automated. Standard work could be completely automated. I don't do anything. Okay, besides someone comes to a website and gets out of a website. Is that we do have standard work applied. Now, I want to advance. I want to get better. So what in my PDCA cycle will allow me to move from the capabilities of compatible capabilities to information sharing? What is required? What type of improvement do I need to move up the hierarchy? Become more valuable to my customer? To work more with Toyota? I use PDCA for that. So as you can see, and that can float up and down this whole hierarchy depending upon where my value stream, my product fits. EDCA is a term I use from a term I learned from Graham Hill, who had worked with Toyota, and it's called EDCA for the reason it's explore. It's more of a design thinking or maybe a lean 3P type of outlook. And what that is is a major jump in improvement, or maybe just trying to get into Toyota, where I'm exploring the unknown. So it's not that I'm just trying to make an incremental improvement. It's how I would go about a major improvement. So we could look at it from that standpoint. But this is the principles of lean thinking and how you need to start applying it to sales and marketing. How you uh, can help sales and marketing as a lean person and how a sales and marketing person can look at lean at how it may help them. So we go back, you can see how we can govern a cycle and how we can judge it through the Kanban board, how we have the business model canvas. I'll, I'll introduce the foundations that are supporting blocks to these individual cycles. Not all the blocks in the foundation may be used in every cycle. They may be particular to one individual cycle. It's where the need is required. Now let's get back to some of this traditional lean type of thinking on how to improve some of the marketing processes. Is first we got to require that continuous improvement is practiced in the interaction with customers in that pillar section before I talked about. And the pillars are supported by the foundation of marketing activities, these blocks. The blocks represent the marketing communication department and coordinate with the team and the value stream manager through the team coordinator. These blocks are made up of the tactics we will employ to move prospects to one stage to another. The, the support that we give our engagement team. As we move forward and we get better with lean and marketing, a more formal collection reporting system may emerge and we'll get better measurements. Okay, but we could start with just something simple as a checklist and an A3. We'll do split A, B testing. All these things are possible. But what is the important part is making sure that these blocks are tied to the lean engagement team and the process of sales. So that there is no an end to which individual value stream they're tied to. By doing that and by understanding that, we make our marketing much more effective much more measurable and much more responsible. The visual management I've talked about, I like to have a big board on it. I show the business model canvas here. You see the Kanban board where I have maybe this is kind of maybe a service blueprint or an action blueprint or some type of Kanban board to show what's going on there. I have uh, dates, key events on there. I got the, you know, over on the left side, I have standard work sitting there for people, the weekly tactical meetings, monthly strategic. I can go into the canvases that we have for standard work and, S and PDCA and for EDCA. So there's a lot of things going on here because you maybe only spend 50% of your time in PDCA or 50% in standard work and 20% PDCA and 20% in design a new system. Yeah, there's a lot of different things. 
What is important is that there's one gathering place for the value stream. One gathering place for the individual business model canvas at a glance we can see what's going on. Making this transparent throughout the organization is one of the most cost effective, time effective things that you can do. This understanding, can it can all be done virtually too, but this understanding is imperative for shared responsibilities and an overlapping work structure. It is one go-to point for it all, and I encourage some process, some visual type management system to be made up. Much of all this is explained in the Marketing with Lean book series. But in addition, I really talk about engaging with someone else finding another place that you can engage and get feedback external to your organization even but you got to make the process your own it is really how work is enabled and remember it's just an experiment it's your pba ca cycle and i hope you can add a few of these thoughts to your toolbox and to the way you do work Thank you.